We are back in the studio after a nice long summer break, and with that comes lots of news. Hello, I'm Erin Holly, And I'm Ethan Farrow. World rankings, unique new bars, and live taste testings? Stay tuned to hear all the details. You're watching LaSalle TV News, where the action never stops. Welcome to LTV News, where we bring you everything from 20th and Olney Avenue, Philadelphia, and the world. There's a lot to catch up on in the next half hour, as I had the opportunity to learn more about a LaSalle student who uses his passion to benefit the LaSalle community. U.S. News has ranked LaSalle among the top half of all nationally recognized universities, scoring exceptionally well for value, mobility, and undergraduate programs. This boosts the university's status from being, nationally, from being regionally to nationally recognized. Alongside neighboring schools, Drexel, Temple, and the University of Pennsylvania. The elevated ranking is said to be related to a surge in freshman admissions, up by 13%. This is the first enrollment increase since 2018. Out of 443 examined colleges and universities, LaSalle has ranked 202 overall, 149 for best value, and 82 for mobility. LaSalle is also the third most diverse university in Pennsylvania. Paired with the admissions increase, LaSalle has also improved on academic preparedness, allowing a large new generation of students the most enriched experience possible. Dedicated LaSalle staff, Joe and Joanna Kitchen, each received awards on behalf of their continuous efforts increasing campus quality of life. The Kitchens have devoted a combined 42 years of exceptional service, respectively, earning them both a 2023 Distinguished LaSalle Educator Award. Those selected to be the annual recipients of, are considered by faculty and staff to be exemplary representatives of LaSalle's core values and mission. Joanna stated in a reaction quote, I was very surprised and, and happy, end quote. Joe can be seen around campus as a public safety officer, and Joanna works as a staff member of the Oath Pizza at the Union Food Court. The beginning of this school year was very eventful when it comes to representing Greek life on campus. On Thursday, September 8th, Meet the Greeks was held on the Union patio. New students at LaSalle had the chance to meet all of the sororities and the fraternities on campus and get to know them and what it is like to be part of their organizations. Speaking of Greek life, one sorority at LaSalle, Gamma Phi Beta, held a kickball tournament called Moonball. This event was held to raise money for a special organization that means a lot to Gamma Phi Beta. Let's take a look at how a kickball tournament raised money for a great cause. Hi, my name is Jillian Herr and I'm the current president of Gamma Phi Beta here at LaSalle. Um, outside of being a sorority, Gamma Phi Beta supports uh, Girls on the Run, which is our phil philanthropic mission. Uh, Girls on the Run is an after-school program for girls in 4th through 6th grade. And all the fundraising we do is through kickball tournaments and bake sales. All of our proceeds go to those girls who might not be able to afford it, but still want to benefit from the mental and physical aspects. Um, something that I like about being a Gamma Phi Beta is that our philanthropy is a proactive organization. Uh, we're helping young girls before the problem begins, build and giving them the tools they need for the mental and physical strength to go on through their lives. Gamma Phi Beta came up with a brilliant idea to create a kickball tournament where student organizations, sororities, and sports teams come together to compete for a great cause. Hi, I'm Melina Rallis. I'm an Alpha Sigma Tall, and I decided to come out tonight for Gamma Phi Beta's Moon Ball. Um, it's a really good cause. It's All the money goes towards Girls on the Run, and I really love their philanthropy and love all the stuff that they do for their philanthropy. And as a fellow sorority, um, I think it's really great that we come together and support each other's um, philanthropies and in all the, the other events that we do together. Tonight was Moonball, and it was a tournament where a bunch of different organizations at school come together and play kickball against each other. But it's a fundraiser for Girls on the Run. Um, so we raise money for scholarships and for the materials and resources needed to provide the program to the kids who will benefit from it in the Philadelphia area. To conclude the night, 
Gamify has a special message to those young girls that may lack confidence. For young girls watching this, I'd say to be proud of every single accomplishment that you have because every one that seems little is going to be so big and impactful and you're so strong and powerful and you can do anything that you put your mind to. So be proud of yourself. You may have noticed a few changes on LaSalle's campus this semester. The university has spent the summer months upgrading facilities and dining additions for the fall semester. Residence halls have been newly decorated with new furniture and necessary maintenance work. With a donation from trustee Robert Catone, the commuter lounge has received a variety of upgrades such as new flooring, new furniture, a kitchenette, and bead bag chairs. Treetops Cafe is returning, featuring new furniture and equipment. Also making a comeback is Treetops After Dark. Students can now enjoy late night options for several nights a week. LaSalle's public safety is transitioned to a new access control platform. The system allows for real-time monitoring of building access and system health and auditing capabilities. A blue light emergency phone enhancement project is also in progress. Additional CCTV cameras were installed across campus to also increase safety. Check out Ethan's interview with senior DART student Sean Cornelli about how he practices using his photography skills around LaSalle's campus. He is a photographer and videographer for LaSalle's athletic department, as well as a full-time student here at LaSalle. <laughs> I'll be talking to Sean about his experience as a photographer and what made him want to start working at the university getting awesome shots for our athletes. Sean, thanks so much for coming. Yeah, thank you for having me. So first off, what made you want to pick up photography as a hobby? So it was always kind of just a slight interest of mine. I've always been into graphic arts and graphic design. And once I was always a small child with my family, uh, because I was the youngest on both sides of my family, any family pictures that were taken at gatherings, they always just kind of handed the camera to me. <laughs> and so I, I picked up photography pretty quickly. And because of that, I have always just been using cameras, getting into photography, and just like taking pictures wherever I went, on vacations, family gatherings, whatever, you name it. That's awesome. So how young would you say were you when you, when you started doing that? Probably once I got around like elementary school, middle school. Wow, that's pretty Every early. time, yeah, it is pretty early. When, whenever we'd go on vacations, they'd be like, oh, Sean, like, get, get a picture of that, get a picture of that. So <laughs> they would just hand me a camera. and I probably thought you were pretty good then. Yeah, I, I, guess, uh, I guess I turned out to be a pretty good photographer. <laughs> that's awesome, man. So, um, so when did you start working for the athletic department as our photographer? So two years ago in spring of 21, uh, about a year and a half ago actually, I started because I emailed the athletic department uh, to do graphic design and graphic arts, but all those positions had been filled. And so because of that, they uh, needed a videographer. So they asked me, hey, do you have a camera? Do you know how to film? And so I started doing that for baseball and uh, the spring sports, but because of COVID, Right. Uh, fall sports were also having like smaller seasons during that time and I just was doing videography for all of them but when we saw the baseball team they didn't have any photos to post for the uh, Instagram any social media and so they asked if I could take photos here and there so I had never done sports photography before I'd always just done like you know vacation pictures with my family and whatnot gotcha. but once I started taking photos of sports uh, and that was baseball they started posting it people really liked it and then I uh, just kind of kept the ball rolling and started taking photos in addition to videos when I would go to uh, men's and women's soccer, lacrosse, field hockey, uh, even water polo, men's and women's basketball. It just kind of fell into my lap pretty much. That's awesome. So you cover all of the sports then here at the university, is that correct? For the most part, okay. yeah. I, I go to every single land sport. So rowing, they, uh, they have events that really aren't um, easy to access, so I don't, I don't travel with them. Uh, swimming, I've done maybe one or two events, and then water polo, I've done a, a match or two. But I mainly do uh, men's and women's soccer, men's and women's basketball, as well as field hockey, lacrosse, um, and I don't do track and field because we don't host gotcha. uh, events there as well. Gotcha. So in your experience as a photographer, what would you say are some of the key aspects to getting a good shot? Uh, staying in focus is absolutely the biggest one. I can't tell you how many times I've had a perfect setup to a shot and it's just been ruined because it wasn't in focus. It is the worst uh, gut check of all time when you look <laughs> down and you look at the camera and you think you just had the, the perfect shot and everything's blurry. Oh, man. So focus and framing, of course, you don't want to you know, get too close. You don't want to be too far away. You just want to have the person filling up the frame 
correctly, have enough headroom, uh, maybe if you want to catch, capture some of the grass that they're standing on. Um, so basically framing and focus are the two big key elements that I think I look for when I take photos. Gotcha. And would you have any tips for someone who might want to get into photography as a hobby or maybe even as a profession? Yeah, just uh, keep going pretty much. You know, you're, you're going to start out and not everything's going to be perfect. You might have uh, some things that are overexposed, too bright, too dark, uh, out of focus. But post-production also is a huge factor. Uh, when you sit down after and you edit your photos, you look at them and you might not have a great photo to start with, but if you can edit the lighting, the coloring, um, maybe crop a little bit. That is where, you know, some good photos come from. I've seen uh, Alex Subers, the uh, photographer for the Sixers, took a photo of Joel Embiid shooting a free throw, but one of the players uh, in practice was standing in front of the camera and completely cut off half of his face, <laughs> and he was able to crop it and basically show this perfect photo where he was framed perfectly in half with the uh, back of someone's shoulder basically in the shot and it like framed into this beautiful image that was posted on Instagram for Joel Embiid's return in the playoffs after he broke his orbital bone last wow. year. Yeah, oh that my was gosh. An unbelievable shot. <laughs> so do you have any social media accounts where you post your pictures, maybe besides the official ones for the athletic department or anything like that? Uh, yeah, I have an Instagram. It's uh, called Shot By and then Scornelli. That was my uh, nickname in high school due to my first initial and last name. So Shot By, uh, so S-H-O-T-B-Y, S-C-O-R-N-E-L-Y, and uh, that is where I post all of my photos. Um, I do a recap of every single game, uh, just about eight to ten photos after a game. So field hockey had a game yesterday against Ryder. I posted about eight to ten photos of that game, and then I uh, share those photos with uh, the people on the team as well. And awesome. They are able to post them whenever they'd like. Awesome. So one last question. What's your go-to camera? that you like to use? So I was gifted a camera when I graduated high school and it is a Nikon D3200 and it has been my baby ever since. And uh, <laughs> one big tip for starting photographers I think would be to invest more in the lens than the actual camera because the mm. lens can control uh, how much light is let in and also how much zoom you have. So those are probably my big two things. Uh, Nikon D3200 and get a good lens for it. Awesome. Well. Thanks so much for coming here, Sean. Really appreciate you coming. Yeah, thank you for having me. And uh, we'll head right back to the desk. Philadelphia Mayor Kenny visited LaSalle during Freshman Orientation Week. Mayor Kenny, a LaSalle alumni who graduated with his bachelor's degree in 1980, met with the new president, Dr. Allen, and talked with students at Treetops Dining Hall. In a statement he made on his Instagram page, quote, had a great time visiting my alma mater last week and meeting the new president, Dr. Dan Allen, along with some of LaSalle U explorers and staff, wishing everyone a great school year, unquote. How awesome. Well, Mayor Kenny, you're always welcome back here at LaSalle, and feel free to stop by the comm center whenever you get a chance. It's time for our first break, but coming up, a brand new limited edition beer is announced. Stay tuned. other health concerns, mental illness is not always easy to see. D-E-P-R. Mental illness doesn't show up on a scale. Bipolar? Sorting out a mental health concern takes professional diagnosis and treatment. Anxiety. I thought so. If you or a loved one has a mental health concern, don't go it alone. For 24-hour free and confidential information and treatment referral, call 1-800-662-HELP. Learn more at samhsa.gov support. People join Walk MS to raise awareness and funds that change the world for everyone affected by multiple sclerosis. Walk MS brings communities together, creating teams with friends, loved ones, and coworkers to rally around those we care about and end MS forever. Together, we can change the world for people with MS. Register today at walkms.org. Philadelphia and Pennsylvania gas prices have recently dropped to being under $4.
noticeable price not seen since March. That's about a dollar and 12 cent difference since a record breaking price of $5.11 per gallon back in June. Northern Delaware currently hosts the lowest price at $3.58 a gallon, recorded on September 6th. Experts say that the adjusted driving habits of the public due to previously inflated pr prices in turn created less demand for oil cheapening its value. Although this is a major change, we are still at se a 70 cent increase difference from prices this time last year. As hurricane activity picks up over the Atlantic, posing threat to oil production, the situation remains volatile. What are two things Philadelphians love? Yep, you guessed it, pretzels and beer. In August, Annie Ann's announced a partnership with Philadelphia's evil genius beer company. The two companies put their creative ideas together and invented an Oktoberfest-style beer. This beer is called Is Butter a Carb? and it has a 5.5% alcohol by volume. The unique flavor is a mix of German malt and Annie Ann's buttery soft pretzels. Co-founder of Evil Genius Beer Company, Trevor Hayward, said, quote, We really wanted to tie brands together in a fun way that reminds you of biting into a warm pretzel with every sip, unquote. Is Butter a Carb? hit stores in late August and is being sold in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware for $11.99 for a six-pack. Be sure to stock up on this new beer just in time for football season. A person scaled the Benjamin Franklin Bridge over Labor Day this weekend. According to reports on social media, a man appeared to be walking on the Ben Franklin Bridge going back and forth between Philadelphia and New Jersey. He eventually descended and was detained by authorities. But that didn't stop many photos from being posted online, apparently showing the climber almost casually strolling along the 30-foot cables. This event started just before 6 p.m. on Sunday the 5th and ended about 20 minutes later. Unconfirmed reports identified the climber as a male. Reports from observers who watched the escapade said once he climbed to the top of the bridge, he reached into his po pocket and then made a gesture that appeared to be looking like tossing out ashes. Have you ever heard of a bar with no bartenders? Well, now you have. A new self-serving bar is coming to the Philadelphia area. Tapster, a Chicago-based self-service bar concept, is moving to the Philadelphia area. The restaurant will open its doors in Philadelphia Outpost early next year in a 3,600 square foot space on South 16th Street. The new location is part of Tapster's planned national expansion. The company currently has locations in Chicago, Seattle, Cleveland, and Austin. Patrons will be able to pour their own drinks from up to 57 different taps. Guests are provided a card that is linked to their payment method. They are charged by the ounce. Each drink is priced differently based off the type of alcohol they choose. In addition, guests have a set limit on the amount of alcohol that they consume. So, we have a lot of different stories going on mm -hmm. with this being our first episode back. How do you feel about this new Annie Ann's beer? Well, everybody loves Annie Ann's, right? I know. So, I mean, I, I mean, I imagine it would probably taste amazing. I know. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. neither of us are 21 yet, so we can't try it. <laughs> but once we both turn 21 this year, we, we should definitely Absolutely. each yeah. try some Annie Ann's beer. Because I, I think it sounds pretty good. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And then, speaking of beer, how do you feel about this bar with no bartenders? This um, I have never heard of a concept like that before. I think having um, that many taps open is actually like pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I think that it could become really popular. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people would probably be, want to go to that, be very interested. Yeah, in it. I haven't yeah. heard of it either. But being a bartender myself, I think it's a little strange. But we'll see how successful they are in the Philadelphia area once they open. That's right. The Free Library of Philadelphia is having trouble staying open as they are short of 300 workers. Over the years, the library has been steadily losing workers until the year 2020 when COVID-19 hit. It resulted in the library firing 200 employees. The same year, they also lost numerous workers due to staff members revolting because workers accused the director of the library engaging in racial discrimination. Between both COVID-related issues and the director situation, it resulted in hundreds of workers in just one single year gone from the library. The city of Philadelphia is trying to do everything they can to keep this historic library alive by approving a $13 million budget increase over the summer that will fill 200 positions. 
We have one more break coming up, but stay tuned for some news about the downfall of a popular company. Bed Bath & Beyond shares drop following CFO Gustavo Arnold jumping to his death from an apartment building in Manhattan Friday, September 6th. Shares are down nearly 20%. Bed Bath & Beyond says, quote, they are profoundly saddened by this shocking loss, unquote. Law enforcement says Arnold's wife witnessed him jump. The source said, while no suicide note was found, no criminality is suspected. Arnold was named as a defendant in a class action lawsuit accusing him and large shareholders engaging in a pump and dump scheme to artificially inflate the price of the company's stock. This lawsuit was filed last month. The company is trying to rescue itself and stay out of bankruptcy by shrinking. The company will lay off approximately 20% of corporate employees and close around 150 stores. Lessons learned through adjust the adjustment to the pandemic have allowed a Los Angeles nonprofit to redirect 250 million pounds of food to people in need. Founded in 2009, Food Forward distributes fresh produce destined for landfill to communities in need of healthier resources. The organization has built a network of produce recovery to distribution centers on a local and national scale. This allowed them in June of this year to reach a notable milestone of 1 billion servings recovered and donated to hungry communities everywhere. Increased food insecurity heightened by the pandemic pushed food forward to create an efficient yet fast flowing system, providing aid to the lives of thousands in need during desperate times. Queen Elizabeth II passed away at age 96, serving the longest reign in British history. She will be mourned around the globe as one of the last monarchs born to a classic age of European royalty. Queen Elizabeth's death came seven months after the 70th anniversary of her ascension to the throne. Her 73-year-old son immediately became King Charles III. King Charles has released a statement from Balmoral with his wife Camilla, the nation's new queen of concert. He says, quote, the death of my beloved mother, Her Majesty, the Queen, is a moment of the greatest sadness for me and all of the members of my family. We will mourn profoundly at the passing of a cherished, sovereign, and much-loved mother, unquote. Wawa has announced that for the month of September, school administrators will be able to get a free cup of coffee at Wawa every day for the month of September. All the school administrators have to do is mention to the cashier that they work for a school and they can get a sized coffee, whatever they want, for free. The offer is available at all Wawa's in Pennsylvania, Delaware, New Jersey, Virginia, Washington, D.C., and Maryland. If you are a teacher, want a free cup of coffee, head down to your local Wawa. This is a momentous occasion for all pumpkin spice fanatics and Oreo lovers everywhere. After a five-year hiatus, pumpkin spice Oreos are back in 2022. Pumpkin Spice Oreos made their return to the shelves of grocery stores on August 15th. The limited edition Oreos are made up of golden wafer cookies with a rich pumpkin spice cream in the middle. In the past few years, Oreo decided to take a break from pumpkin spice and introduce some other new flavors such as chocolate hazelnut, java chip, apple pie, and more instead of the pumpkin spice. This year, they decided to get back into the game as many other companies were introducing pumpkin spice products. In a statement from the company, quote, Oreo pumpkin spice sandwich cookies are the classic original snack cookies you've always known and loved, but with the unforgettable twist of pumpkin spice cream to celebrate fall, unquote. Stay tuned and Ethan and I will be the judge of that.
You know you watch. You shouldn't be watching this. You should be watching the South TV. Hey, watch the South TV. Man, Keegan is taking this You Know You Watch thing way too seriously. You Know You Watch LaSalle TV. All right, we are back. This is a first for Ethan and I doing a live taste testing. So we are about to try the new pumpkin spice Oreos. All right, cheers. Let's, cheers. Let's test it out. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, my initial reaction, I love it. It tastes just like the pumpkin spice ice latte that I get from Dunkin' every morning. So I'm a huge fan. Uh, yeah, two thumbs up for me. Are really you like a taste. pumpkin spice fan? Yeah. yeah. You are? Yeah, I do. Okay, because yeah. I feel like yeah. with pumpkin spice, like you either love it or hate it. Mm -hmm. And especially yeah. during this time of year, pumpkin spice is so just like in your face. Like every... Yeah, see, it's funny. I hadn't even heard that they did these before, and now I'm probably going to go out and buy a pack tomorrow. Oh, you, you can, you can <laughs> yeah. have this pack. <laughs> I'll eat them all today if I take it home. Yeah. Wow, that was yeah. that was really good. I'm, really good. Highly I'm recommend. Glad that we did this. We're gonna have to try some more foods during the rest of our episodes. Absolutely, definitely. definitely. All right. <laughs> well, that just about does it for our first episode of LTV News for this year. But be sure to find us on the web as the rest of LaSalle TV on our Facebook page. We love to hear your thoughts, so tweet at us using our Twitter handle and start the conversation. If you missed the scoop and want to see it. You can find episodes on YouTube at our LaSalle TV Philly page. Until next semester, my bad, until next episode, for Maria, Maddie, Tori, and the entire crew, I'm Aaron Holly. Thanks for watching LTV News, where the action never stops.